let's welcome in our next guest repco home finance limited the management now joins us on a phone line mr v raghu ed at repco home finance sir if you could just first start by the seventh pay commission and what sort of a impact do you believe it will have on your company because your ticket size is quite lower that's where you expect demand pick up definitely uh, the pay revision by the seventh pay commission which is probably around 23 and a half percent on a gross scale is going to help uh, the borrowers to have more disposable income in their hands which probably could help them serve the emis a bit more easier than what they have been doing in the past and especially you know the provision that the minimum pay to be increased from 7000 per month to 18000 per month probably help those people in that segment to convert their dream into reality because they will have more income though i i personally believe that this could have a delayed effect on the housing finance industry because most of the time the increase in the income while it may help them serve the emi on time they are constrained by to bring in that lump sum money as margin so we believe that probably the arrears payment by the government to them could help them to bring that margin money that's why we believe that could have a lag effect but this is definitely a welcome step because once the public sector the pay is being revised for to be followed by the state government for the state government employees and also it will have a, you know the triple effect on the private sector employees so definitely this will be a boost to the housing finance industry and for companies like us who have an average ticket size of still less than 1.5 million right you know as far as the overall demand is concerned you were already growing at 15 20% plus do you expect that number to be higher next year because of the pay commission uh we believe that you know we have been growing around 20 till about 28 30% till the last financial and we still believe that about 25% growth should be feasible in the coming years and this measures by the government should also help in reaching those levels right you know as far as our margins are concerned uh, do you believe that uh, you know with the low ticket size being there asset quality being on the lower side uh you know overall do you think that margins uh, would tend to come down because now the competition is increasing in the housing finance space yes the competition is increasing probably we, you know the margin should remain more or less stable that's what we believe because since you know on the one hand the cost of funds are also coming down and uh, you know the lending rates yields also because of the competitive pressure there could be uh, you know effect on that also but since we have been maintaining a spread of around 3% over the last 3 4 years we believe that the margins could be stable in the current year so uh, you know one would imagine that you are in a slightly more risky area because uh, uh, sector segment of the market because i understand that the majority of your loans are given to people who do not have salaries they are self financing uh, how right. do you manage to keep it still slightly low risk See, I think probably the risk that everybody is talking about is a perceived risk of lending to the self-employed segment. Mm -hmm. Now, this company has been lending to the self-employed segment for the last 16 years now, and yes. we have found that as long as you are able to underwrite the loans very clearly at the beginning, mm -hmm. you can definitely manage that risk. So, how do you go about doing that? Well, I think you have to estimate the cash flows of the borrower since they don't mm. have any other statistical proof or you know a documented proof like their you know the they don't have a regular income or they don't have certified balance sheet. Mm. I think one has to have patience to construct the balance sheet and then arrive at what is their disposable income, mm. which could probably serve as an EMI, and then mm. you have to do that. Uh, as you were mentioning, for the last 16 years you've done it, and your focus, of course, is in the southern states. Uh, we've seen significant growth in that, uh, you know, the self-employed space in the southern states in the previous decade, which is slightly slowing down now. If one looks at uh, the kind of income generation and the uh, SME sector in that, uh, in um, much of the south. Now, uh, how do you diversify? How do you keep growing? basically you know we are looking at those people who are you know the retail traders we are not you know looking at those sme funding or something like that okay. so i think and most of my borrowers they believe in cash business that's so that's the reason why we have been able to maintain that asset quality hmm. you know so that's precisely what i'm saying i'm asking you that even if uh, if one uh, i'm taking sme as a uh, proxy for the growth because if uh, sme is falling one would assume that even small retail small service uh, owners are also 
uh, facing a little of, bit of contraction right now in the last two years. Uh, are you facing that in the southern market? Are you seeing that this is have to be mean uh, expanding into other markets more aggressively? Uh, I don't think so. Okay. We have been having a fairly good experience with this borrowers. I think as I told you, most of my the majority of my borrowers are all into selling of essential goods, the demand for which will never die down. Hmm. I think that demand will keep on going only, and that's the reason why we are able to maintain this. Hmm. So uh, we don't uh, find any reason for diversification as of now. Okay, so uh, say more than two thirds or about two thirds is just Tamil Nadu, sir. Yeah, we have about sixty-three percent of the business coming in from Tamil Nadu. We are right. But uh, I remember speaking to you about uh, I, I would say more than a year ago, and uh, you yeah. had told us that you are planning to expand uh, in West Bengal, Orissa. How far have those plans gone? We already have a couple of branches in West Bengal and Odisha. We have also expanded in Maharashtra and Gujarat and in Madhya Pradesh. We are trying to expand, mm. and I think slowly we will expand into other segment also. But as long as there is a good business available in the existing market, we'd like to capture that business. Mm. And uh, uh, you obviously these are for smaller house homes, right? Smaller ticket size yes. homes. Um, right. Again, the South was essentially the place which held out in the real estate and housing market. Especially if one looked at uh, Bangalore, much of uh, the Tamil Nadu tier 2 and tier 3 cities. Again, now in the last quarter, we are see, hearing that that market has slowed down a little bit and the northern market is again picking up gradually after a long pause. Uh, but is your ground uh, level uh, information similar or you think that this is overplayed? I think it's overplayed. I think we still believe that the ground reality in uh, the southern market where we have been having uh, quite a bit of share, the market is still growing at a steady phase mm. and we'll still have a lot of business opportunities there. And secondly, as far as the information which we have, I think as for the estimates, 40% of the demand for housing or for housing costing up to 50 lakhs of rupees in the country, whether it is southern or northern region. Mm. I think that market is probably, you know, accounting for a majority of uh, the requirement of houses. Mm. And with a lot of positive things that has been happening for the housing sector, which is going to have an indirect effect on the housing finance industry. Mm. I think we believe that, uh, I think uh, the prospect for the housing finance industry is quite good in the coming year. And uh, we, uh, you know, again, when we spoke to you last, you were saying that you're trying to reduce your cost of funds by reducing the amount of dependence that you had on banks for providing the funds. Yeah. How, what is the latest figure, sir? Uh, uh, I think during your previous quarter, you had gone down to almost 94%. Is it, uh, has it reduced any further? I think our bank borrowings have always been in the range of between 60 to 70 percent. Okay. So we also, you know, like uh, depending on the market condition, we'll switch between, I guess, in a year back, I said we will reduce our dependency on the banks and then try to mo raise more money through the money market instrument or the capital market instrument, that is through the bond route. Mm. We are still diversifying and as long as this beneficial, whichever is beneficial, we try to tap that market. Mm. Because today the differential between the borrowings from the banks and the bond market, mm. the interest rate differential is very low. Mm. And I, we still have, you know, you know, better dealing with the banks because we have access to long-term funds that is for mm. a period of 10 years, whereas the bond market funds are for a shorter period of 3 to 5 years. So I think for a housing finance company, borrowing from the banks for a longer period is more advantageous. Mm. But at the same time, depending on the difference, uh, differential in the market, we'd like mm. to approach the market accordingly.